In this lesson, we will examine two common abdominal infections, acute appendicitis and diverticulitis. First, let's talk about acute appendicitis. Acute appendicitis usually begins with vague, often colicky epigastric or periumbilical pain, which localizes to the right lower quadrant over the next 12 hours. On exam, patients have moderate fever, right lower quadrant tenderness, guarding, rebound tenderness, and a positive obturator sign. The technique for detecting the obturator sign, called the obturator test, is carried out on each leg in succession. The patient lies on his or her back with the hip and knee both flexed at 90 degrees. The examiner holds the patient's ankle with one hand and knee with the other hand. The examiner internally rotates the hip by moving the patient's ankle away from the patient's body while allowing the knee to move only inward. When acute appendicitis is suspected, the inflamed and enlarged appendix may come into physical contact with the obturator internus muscle, which will be stretched when this maneuver is performed on the right leg. This causes pain and is evidence in support of an inflamed appendix. Rectal exams should be done in virtually all patients who present with abdominal pain, and in the case of appendicitis, tenderness in the high right rectal region is suggestive of the diagnosis. The white blood cell count is moderately elevated. The diagnosis can be confirmed with computed tomography scan, and in uncomplicated cases, laparoscopic appendectomy is curative. Antibiotics play a lesser role, however, are given once the diagnosis is apparent. Ertapenem, with its long half-life and a single daily dose, has been shown to be effective. Diverticulitis is inflammation of a diverticulum. Diverticula are small pouches that can develop in the wall of the intestine. Diverticulitis has often been called left-sided appendicitis but usually presents more subtly with mild to moderate left lower quadrant abdominal pain lasting days. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting are frequent. A slight increase in white blood cell count and moderate fever is common. On exam, left lower quadrant tenderness and a mass that indicates a phlegmon is usual. For most patients, surgical resection of the involved sigmoid colon is ultimately required. However, decreasing inflammation and infection with antibiotics which cover the mixed flora of the colon prior to surgery is highly recommended. For milder ill patients, amoxicillin clavulanate or a fluoroquinolone plus metronidazole should be effective. For sick patients, hospitalization and IV antibiotics such as piperacillin, tazobactam, or ertapenem are required.